become mothers every day. But if I'm honest, I've often wondered what it would be like being a mum in a wheelchair. You know what they say? If in doubt, ask. So I spent the day with new mum, Emma Booth. Baba, he's sideways. What are you doing sideways? You Me, doing babies, sideways? maybe one day. Right now I'm focused on my career. And so was Emma until she gave birth to Jamie last year. Come on. Oh. Emma's been in a wheelchair since she was six years old. Her injury is the result of being hit by a car. She was a perfect person to spend a day with and satisfy my curiosity about motherhood. Were you always confident that you were going to be able to get pregnant, give birth and, and be a mum? Yeah, I guess. I, I didn't really give it a lot of thought, I suppose. Um, I have quite a few friends, um, paraplegics, who have had babies, so I sort of spoke to them about it. And, um, yeah, I just... Just did it, really. I didn't really give it a lot of thought. I just sort of thought, oh, well, we'll get pregnant and then we'll see what happens after that. Now, I haven't had a lot of experience handling young babies. Jamie seemed pretty relaxed, so I thought I'd try giving her a bottle. Shove it in and away we go. So, Emma, tell me, what was it like being pregnant in the wheelchair? Um, the first initial months weren't too bad, but um, as the pregnancy progressed and you get bigger and bigger and bigger, it does become more challenging to get around and stuff. And it's hard to, things like pushing up hills, you know, when you're in a chair and you have to sort of lean forward to push up a hill. When you've got this big stomach that comes out here, you can't lean forward. I've often um, wondered how easy it is to find a doctor and midwife the, who have experience uh, with paraplegic mothers. I basically just got assigned a midwife at the hospital. Um, she had not had a paraplegic mother, but she was really cool. I mean, she was really open to it and she did some research and stuff for herself. Um, and she spoke to other midwives who had had um, paraplegic mothers. The obstetrician that I had, luckily, um, I just got assigned to her as well, but she had um, had um, delivered babies for paraplegic women. I'm quite curious as a paraplegic myself, would you would you have been able to push? Well, um, they do this thing called fondle pressure and what they do as a midwife or your obstetrician, your midwife, whatever, when you're having a contraction they push down on your stomach at the same time and they sort of just push her out with your body, with your contractions. Um, and apparently it works. And then I guess they have to, they might have to use um, um, Von Chus or something like that mm -hmm. to like pliers. I can't think of the proper, um, proper name for <laughs> I don't want to think about Forceps. it. Forceps. And what about, would you think you'd feel as much pain as somebody who wasn't paraplegic, um, I wonder? No, probably, well I probably wouldn't have, just because of my level of injury. Um, I don't know. No, I don't. Um, I don't know. You still have an epidural, mm -hmm. um, so you probably wouldn't feel anything. Friends with children have assured the me that not being thighs. able to feel the pain Chubby, is a bonus. Chubba bubba. She's strong though, isn't she? She is very yeah. strong. Yeah. Jamie was in a breech position, so Emma ended up having a cesarean. Emma, what did you say to I actually her? had to have a general anaesthetic, um, so I wasn't actually awake when she came out. But Dean was there. Um, but they told me that it was a girl and that she was nine pounds eight. And um, I couldn't quite believe that because um, it was rather large. Emma's adjusted well to motherhood, but the hospital wasn't really prepared for a paraplegic mother. Well, they have those really ancient um, bassinets for the babies that they've had for a million years in hospitals, those really high ones. And they're so high, I couldn't even get her in and out of the bassinet by myself. So whenever I needed to breastfeed, or just, you know, if she got tizzy and she wanted to be picked up, I had to get the midwife to come in and pass her over to me. Emma, what adjustments have you had to make since Jamie was born? Normally, when you're like a newborn, they play on their little play mat on the floor, but obviously it's just a bit hard for me to get her on and off the floor at the moment because she's such a dead weight. Um, so Dean's dad, being the handyman that he is, made us this little um, play pen with a 
movable floor in it so we can um, move it up and down as she gets bigger and she can just, we just pop her on that and she can play on her play mat and um, don't have to worry about it rolling off the sides or anything like that. The only thing that I really have trouble with day to day is bathing. Um, it's just a bit of a mission really for me to get her in and out of the bath and stuff because she can't sit up yet by herself. So um, her dad does it, like Dean does it, when he gets home from work. We're going to have a bath chaps, are we? Don't you wear on daddy? Husband on daddy? Dean has there cerebral palsy. He takes over at bath time, supporting Jamie with his stronger arm. What I do is I come home in, at, at night after work and I take Jamie off Emma while she cooks her dinner. And I go and bath her and give her the bottle and, and put her down. <laughs> It's quite a nice time for those two just to um, have some time together in the bath because he hasn't seen her all day and it's quite nice for them to, you know, bond I suppose. Where are we going Baba? Where are we going? Emma spends most of her days at home. Outings are limited to weekends when Dean's around because it's simply too hard to manage a wriggly baby from a wheelchair. Because they're home so much, Jamie has good routines. I, I don't really take her out that much um, by myself at the moment, just because it's, it's a bit tricky getting her in and out of the car, getting my chair in and out of the car. So we just sort of spend a lot of our time at home. I find getting myself in and out of the car quite time consuming. Getting Jamie and push chair into the car is an extra challenge. Emma is loving motherhood. But would she be game to have another child? I guess if we do have another child, um, we might have a big gap. Well, not too big, but I mean, I don't think I'd really want a little toddler and a baby. Um, so I guess we'd need to wait for Jamie until she was at least probably four. Is there anything you think you'd do differently next time? Get a bigger house. Get a bigger house, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the baby's bedroom, like, way down the other end. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>